Referee's faking him out here a little bit. Both trying to steal the ball on the way up. Wolf controls for North Carolina. Clean coming out awful high. Kenny Smith trying to recognize what the defense is. It's a zone. A little matchup, 1-3-1. One, one. They steal as they trap Wolf in the far corner, and Villanova brings it down with its first possession. Villanova is showing an awful lot of different looks, and every, in every case, they're very aggressive on the ball. North Carolina is zone of their own. 2-3 zone, not quite as active. Bigger inside, they can seal up Pinckney, which they will try to do. Pinckney comes out high and sends it back to Gary McLean. The McLeans are not related on the Villanova team, and the Smiths, there's a Ranzino Smith on North Carolina's bench, they are not related either. Both teams gonna be very patient, and this is a tempo that Villanova certainly likes, and North Carolina in years past used to have the press to take it away. Presley hits his first shot. Presley throughout his career has been a very erratic shooter. There's the 1-3-1 one, one trap. Kenny Smith rather lackadaisical pass. That'll get picked off. Gary McLean controls for Villanova. Eddie Pinckney is not Patrick Ewing by any stretch of the imagination because of size, but he plays that defense very similar to Ewing that he comes out and is a great intimidating shot blocker. Wilbur. Doherty. You will not see Villanova getting too many second chance opportunities. That concerns Raleigh Massimino. Thompson. Over Eddie Pinckney. Eddie Pinkney was able to shut out Len Bias, the super uh, basketball player from the University of Maryland the other night. Probably one of the finest jobs uh, that I've seen all year on an individual defensive player. Villanova, no rush here, Brent. And that zone already by North Carolina is backed inside the foul line, which means that Villanova's got to take some shots from the top of the key. It'll only be about 17 or 18 feet. Shots there, Wilbur just might as well get ready to start taking it. Walker. McLean turns it over. McLean is one of the most unusual street players that you'll ever see. I mean, he can go for 20 minutes and not know he's on the court, and then he can come right back in about five or six minutes and light up the scoreboard. Bad pass off a Villanova player's leg and out of bounds, so they got lucky off the bad pass. They really did. Kenny Smith threw one as his big man was moving away from him. Awful difficult to catch that ball had it not been kicked. In deep toward Dory. Lost it. Claims he was fouled. But it is Villanova's possession. North Carolina wants to push the ball inside. That's been their game plan throughout the entire part of this year. Both of these coaches take the personnel they have and, and use the offensive and defensive structure to work with the players. Scored Wilbur. Short, short. He is 0 for 2. Smith pounds it down. Villanova does not let him penetrate all the way. See Wolf looking inside. game like this, Carolina will miss Steve Hale. Wilbur rebounds Wolf Smith. That's the shot that Wolf wants. He's got a good baseline jumper, 12 to 15 feet. Both teams starting a little cold. And a little tentative. Presley. Again, it's all white at that glass after Villanova shoots. That zone matching up. Buzz Peterson. Peterson tried to get the screen from Wolf that time to get himself a baseline jump shot. It just wasn't there. Villanova moving real quick. Dorney. I 
one of the things, Brent, that North Carolina has instituted this year in their zone offenses is to get Doherty, and when Martin comes in, down in the lane. I have never seen a team play that paint as effectively against the zone as North Carolina does. You have to believe they're in there three seconds, but they keep getting away with it all the time. And I'm not saying they are. They're just inside all the time. Pinkney gets inside, and he is fouled. And we'll see on this replay. Doherty is in that lane, and he's packed down inside. He's got the whole zone behind him. He takes up a lot of space. He gets an excellent position. Billy, that was the first foul on Wolf. Pinkney coming to the free throw line. Martin has checked into the game. And Pinkney is someone they want to keep on that free throw line in this game. If you're Villanova, and Eddie Pinkney goes to the foul line more than anybody in his league. It's tremendous how he can go inside. Kenny Walker of Kentucky and Eddie Pinkney probably explode inside as well as anybody in the country. The injured Steve Hale had his separated shoulder operated on the other day back in North Carolina. Interesting little sideline. His mother came to be there with him along with the father, and he's a pre-med student. So Mrs. Hale went to his biology classes, took notes on a tape recorder, and brought them back to Steve at night so he wouldn't miss class time. Kenny Smith puts in the field goal for North Carolina. It is 6-3, 15-03 to go here in the first half. You don't see many people handle Raleigh Massimino's 1-3-1 half-court trap any better than North Carolina did there. They went right over the top of it. Harold Jensen is 32, and he's checked in for Massimino. North Carolina still playing their zone and matching up with a little more. Got Wolf playing Jensen man takes the shot. Right away by Doherty. And again, no second chance opportunities for Villanova. Bigger Carolina team dominating inside. And Doherty pushes it 8-3. Doherty is an excellent shooter from that range. North Carolina is really blessed with their big guys can all stick the jump shot from the foul line on in. And North Carolina goes man to man. Pinkney on Doherty inside. And he stays with it. Eddie Pinkney, something special, as I said. He and Kenny Walker are so explosive when they get down in the paint. I don't think Doherty can handle him because of the quickness factor. Now Villanova changes their defense, goes to a 2-3 type zone. Villanova very emotional. You can see the players up already on the sideline. Now they're sitting back down. This is the last chance for this senior squad. Knocked away from Doherty, and he was fouled by Presley. Carolina's possession out of bounds after the foul. Villanova has seen North Carolina play. Peterson's got to take that jump. They let him have it. It's like they wanted him to. They sided him. They've got a lot of quickness in there now for Villanova. Jensen and McLean, the two McLeans and Presley, really have a big quickness advantage with Pinkney, but North Carolina huge in the middle. Dwayne McLean is not yet on the scoreboard for the Wildcats, number 33. He's camped over here on the right. Now he comes out, talks to Gary McLean. North Carolina's in his zone, but they really match up in that zone. Dwayne McLean still not on the scoreboard. And it goes over to North Carolina. Eddie Pinkney getting to the spot, but not able to get his hands on the ball. Again, the, the space that North Carolina takes up with that back line, it's kind of amazing. We're talking about seven foot, 6'11", 6'10", and they all weigh about 230. Smith takes it to the other side. They dump it in the market. Such a soft touch. He's pretty quick with the release, and his body, again, is so big, you can't get right on him. You can't chest to chest him. Not a great athlete, but a very hard worker, and does a lot with what he has, which is size. Red shirted last year. Wayne to Presley. Foul call underneath as Presley came to the basket strongly. Excellent ball handling, and here's where Villanova used their quickness advantage to go around the Carolina zone. And Presley came right down the middle. Martin not getting there in time. Presley misses the slam. He really had that slam, and I think I think he just lost some concentration. That was kind of an easy basket. 
Presley is the most unusual free throw shooter. Has very bad percentage. He's only shooting 64 percent. Dave Gavin made an interesting point the other night watching the game. He said he either puts it right in or he throws up the worst bricks he's ever seen. Presley got it back and was rejected by Martin. Another denying the fast break opportunity. by McLean. It'll go out of bounds. Carolina's ball. No, it, it hit Wolf's hand and Wolf realized it. Here's a good block by Martin. Presley tried to take it one dribble too far. What happened there, Brent? It wasn't. Went right off the hands, but Joe Wolf just nipped it as it went out of bounds. Nice piece of officiating there. Jordy rebounding the miss again by McLean, who cannot get started. And remember, he is the streak shooter in Villanova. I don't know if it needs him to get hot. Wolf. He is an excellent baseline jump shooter. Polar, Wisconsin native. His brother, of course, played for the University of North Carolina. Two subs for North Carolina waiting. Presley hits from the perimeter. That shot will be there all day long. Presley looks very confident on his shot. McLean just the opposite. Now Villanova goes back to the trap. Kenny Smith extremely patient. Kenny would like to see Villanova play a little man-to-man, -man, and most people feel if they can ever get Villanova out of the zone, get a, get a lead on him, Villanova has a lot of problems because they very seldom play the man-to-man -man defense. Nobody works any harder than Massimino on that sideline. <laughs> Look at him. This is the third change of closing he's had today. I saw him going for a walk when we were going to church this morning. Get on the Carolina Blue sweater. Doherty. Missing. Pinkney rebounding. <laughs> Villanova's passing up some shooting opportunities. I think Presley that time thought about it. He's had the touch. Elected to bring it back outside. But Gary McLean is a fellow that's got a pretty good shot. There he's taking it right there. And he's the fellow that North Carolina just letting take the shot. And then alertly they are denying Smith access to the middle. Trying to take away any easy baskets. Presley on the drive for Nova. And he turned it over. Kenny Smith did a very smart thing in that play. He realized that that ball was going to be picked up by Villanova. Instead of going for the ball, he got back on defense, and that's what prevented the layup. Villanova comes out and showing that 1-3-1 again. Now they have Presley out on the top. It's hard to throw the ball across court with Presley playing a point. This puts McLean in the middle. Smith. Sent it to Ranzino Smith. Looking for his first shot. A little left-handed jump shot. Comes off the bench, and he contributes right away. It looked like Brent, and he knew exactly what he wanted to do. Now, Mark Plansky is on the floor, number 31, and they'll try to get him in the offense, too. He is a good shooter, because Presley and Pinckney have all of Nova's points. Back pass. Yes, and Ranzino Smith comes back. Goes right to the glass. Hunter rebound. Foul. And it was McLean, Dwayne McLean. Coming out of high school, many people felt that Curtis Hunter was going to be the next Michael Jordan. I mean, he was that caliber an all-American high school ball player. But he's been saddled with injuries and has never really been able to get on stride. But he has those kind of physical abilities. North Carolina looking for that lob inside. A patient team to be as young as they are. This must have been some game the other night when Auburn and Coach Smith took on North Carolina and Coach Smith and Two Smith playing for the Tar Heels. Villanova changing their defense a little bit. They get so many different looks. Unless you have a point guard that can really study and see where the holes are, you get in a lot of trouble. And Zeno. He looks like he was sent in a game to be the designated shooter. There is no question that he had an assignment for this game, and Wally Massimino had no way to anticipate that was coming. 
North Carolina matched up man to man. Now look for Eddie Pinkney to get inside that lane. Plansky. Villanova's designated shooter doesn't respond. There is a case for Denny Smith thought he had the referee faked out because Eddie Pinkney was going for the ball, but the ref right on the play. Clubs going to the bench, even though this is not a fast-paced ball game with a lot of people here today. Asamino went to his bench in the first half against Maryland the other night, too, and then stuck pretty much with his starting five down the stretch. And he's left to Wayne misses and Wolf rebounds. McLean, again, not able to get on track. Pinkney reaches push. across Doherty. And there's a case where Doherty just had the perfect position. Eddie wanting to use the quickness, but you see Doherty's strength holding him off, so he just couldn't get around him. Only the third team foul, though. And look for North Carolina trying to set those screens in tight. Both got a lot of size on Plansky. Ranzino Smith again. Lansky cleared Wolf out to rebound for Nova. Bad pass. They were trying to hit Plansky in the corner. Kenny Smith. Court, put his hand up as if he was the offensive player filling the lane and it threw Kenny Smith off. Kenny was looking for the pass and all of a sudden realized it was Plansky, not one of his teammates that was in the other lane. Good play. Already looks like he may have twisted an ankle there. Dean Smith won the offensive charge. back but before he did he traveled and turned it over it's good defense by McLean he followed him all the way across the lane and was there Wilbur and Presley returning for Villanova and for Dean Smith Martin comes back in Doherty stays on the floor turnovers about even we're at the 621 mark Carolina leading by six points. Peterson in the ball game also, so uh, neither coach having any foul difficulty, nor should these teams be uh, winded at this point because it's a very slow-paced game. But they're really going to the bench. Hunter late getting there. Wayne McLean trying to get on the board. Pinkney cleaning up. He is fouled by Martin. Again, Eddie Pinkney just so quick on the inside. He was really out of position for the rebound. McLean throws up another bad shot for him, and there's Pinkney going over the top of everybody. Doherty comes down on the arm, no question that he hit him. Two shots coming up. Yesterday, of course, Memphis State and Georgetown qualified for the Final Four in Lexington. After this game, you'll go out to Denver and you'll be seeing St. John's against North Carolina State. The foul was going to be charged against Martin, but I really believe Doherty is the one that came down on the arm. Eddie Pinkney, normally a very good free throw shooter at 73%. This is the front end of both of those shots. Plansky checking back in, so both coaches are just shuttling players in and out right now. Pinkney, Pinkney has been to the foul line 245 times this year, which is an incredible amount for a guy that plays on the inside. Half-court game. Ordinarily, you would say this is Raleigh Massimino's pace, but North Carolina has gone to a half-court game because they are not as quick as they normally are. This is a bigger Carolina team. It's one that has improved for Dean Smith here in the last month or so. Peaked at the right time, you might say. And now trying to get Coach Smith to the Final Four for the eighth time. He's lost only one regional championship, and that was the Georgia. Villanova actually put yep. the ball in on this side. Presley had a hand on it. Went in. He tried to catch it, just pitched it right back up in the air. Let's go on a trapping now. And miss it at the end he wants. Think now. Doherty came up and met him, and the foul is on Doherty. 
Now, Doherty, Doherty and Martin, they had their hands straight up in the air, and that was a shot that wasn't even close. Eddie Pinckney again wasn't really in a position to get that rebound, but held his ground well, and there's Doherty coming down with Martin on the chop. Only Doherty's first personal. I think he got away with one the last time they charged it to Martin. And there's that familiar sight, Eddie Pinckney back in the line again. Figure the entire Villanova team's been on the line 750 times this year, and Eddie Pinckney by himself been on the line 250 of those. Presley had him beat. Martin goes up, gets all ball. He is a big man, has long arms. Eddie Smith outside to McLean, and now Wilbur gets inside, and he travels. Goes over to Carolina, and Dwayne McLean returns for Villanova. There's a case with just a little hesitancy. Both of these teams are very tentative in regard to putting up a shot. Reminds me a little bit of the Illinois-Georgia Tech game. It really never could get a flow going. Martin Pinkney rejects it. Wilbur. He has not shot well in the first half either. Villanova the other night against Maryland in the first half or for the game the 17 for 46 in the first half they were 9 for 29 and it's almost a replay but remember they won that ball game and not in bad shape in this one considering the shooting Peterson's miss rebounded by Wilbur McClain misses off the drive Carolina coming back Presley, and he's fouled by Peterson. And Raleigh Massimino is searching for someone to contribute some offense. You can't ask a coach to motivate any tougher than he is. Gary McClain. And Zeno Smith has returned for the Tar Heels. And uh, would you believe it? Regional final. It's 18-12 with three minutes to go. able to punch the ball inside at all against Villanova and that's one of the things that they count on so much getting a team in foul trouble and getting a lot of easy baskets just not getting them today turned it over Plain pulls it up you get the feeling Brent, that Villanova might be better off going right after North Carolina just picking them up full court using their quickness advantage that's the first basket we've had in a half a century. Jordan. Pinckney rose up and fouled him, and that's the second on Ed Pinckney. You will see, for the first time in, in a long time, number of minutes, North Carolina has not been able to get the ball inside. Doherty shielded Pinckney pretty well with the arm without extending it and drew another, drew another foul. Raleigh Massimino is going to come down with another case of tuberculitis if he's not careful here this afternoon. Uh, he's, as he said to us, he's been to this game four times now and lost in the other three occasions. He wants this one. Well, that gets North Carolina off the snide. They've been on 18 for a long, long time. Now they're going to try Chuck Everson, and Massimino will sit Pinkney down so he does not pick up his third foul here in the last two minutes and 22 seconds of the first half. And 
now we really have the Beef Brothers in there. There is no question where's the beef today <laughs> with Everson in there. Doherty and Wolf. Everson. And little Ranzino Smith rested away from the Big Pine. That's the second big, re big rebound by Ranzino Smith on the inside. into the game earlier as a designated shooter and now Villanova's got an eye out for him so the zone extends whenever he catches the ball. Lanzino rattles out that time and quickly Villanova comes down. Wilbur controlling gets into the middle. Starting to run the break pretty well and they're beating North Carolina back. They just can't get the uh, break to turn into a scoring opportunity. Presley. You wonder where that shot came from, Brent. Both teams' shot selection was very uneasy. They can't get what they want. Good backdoor cut. Smith. Hobson. Oh. And he was pounded as he came for that rebound. Raleigh Massimino can't believe it. Wondering when what, something's going to fall for him. Of course, our second game I mentioned is North Carolina State against St. John's. And coming up at halftime, we'll have a feature on the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. And also, we'll have a live report from Denver. Doug Collins and Gary Bender standing by to bring us that game, the West Regional Final, as we fill out the field for Lexington, Kentucky, and the Final Four next Saturday afternoon here on CBS. Beautiful play. Dave Popson, recruited by everybody in the world when he was a senior in high school. Bigger Phelps won him badly along with a number of people, and that was a great move on the inside. Good quickness on Popson. He hadn't really come along like everybody expected, but certainly has a world of talent. Gary McLean in for Villanova. And that was a case where the Villanova zone just got off balance a little bit. Popson was wide open on that baseline. Let's say we forget this half, Mr. Packer. Burn it, throw it away, well, get a new deck of cards. It has not been uh, any piece of art, that's for sure. But a lot on the line. We've got a very young team and a very experienced team. It looks like those seniors got a little tight so far for Villanova. Still tight. Plain losers it out of bounds. Jensen, there's Raleigh burying his hands. He can't believe it. But what That's the only way to take this half. But what happened here? Jensen forced the ball in the territory where it really had no business going. North Carolina going for one. North Carolina, remember, had the big lead on Auburn, and Auburn came back to grab him. Couldn't quite catch up. Had the nice lead on Notre Dame, sir. This is where they miss Steve Hale, another experienced hand in the backcourt. Kenny Smith is hung up. I can't believe he didn't call yeah. traveling, and then finally the whistle came. I thought Raleigh was going to jump all over him over there on that side, the way he came out of his chair. This reminds me a little bit also of the Villanova-Maryland game where Maryland was holding for the last shot in a nice working margin situation against Villanova and gave up that chance for the last shot. Villanova was able to execute well. Presley maneuvering. And at the buzzer, score for Villanova. Wayne McClay got to the side. Finally gets into the act here. And Villanova winds up 6 of 25. 21 percent and you can watch his positioning over there there was a case Brent where bad execution by North Carolina going for the last shot they were in a position to be in good shape and here Villanova comes right back on him that's it Dwayne McLean shut out until the buzzer Presley and McLean were three of 14 combined so they'll try to pick it up here for coach Massimino and it's Villanova's possession they'll be working their offense in front of Massimino who is not happy Dean Smith starts in a man to man White Wilbur not starting instead it is Jensen okay. 
man-to-man, -man, but it's packed way in. Jensen with the first shot of the second half, and this is Doherty rebounding for the Tar Heels. Uh, Massimino holds up his hands, and he's to say, hey, nothing's falling. Knox is getting pretty good position inside on Pinckney. Villanova stays right in that zone. And I think if bad pass by Kenny Smith. Manzino Smith actually faked him out. I think if, if nothing breaks here, Brent, you're going to see North Carolina say, I'm tired of playing against the zone and maybe try to go a little four corners. Make Villanova come out of there. Wolf is really pushing Eddie Pinckney on the inside. Jensen again. That was a positive looking shot. Villanova, just as they did against Maryland, hit that last basket to the end of the half when they were down. And they came out and had that great run against Maryland the other night. Started the second half, put the game away. Lanzino. Great touch. Six points off the bench for Carolina. He was a great scorer in high school out of Chapel Hill, North Carolina. A good job in the first half. North Carolina goes back to the zone. Jensen wide open. Are they playing man-to-man? -man? Gary McLean. I think Kenny Smith just got out of position there. They were still in the man-to-man. Jordy. Had Eddie Pinkney on his back, and Pinkney couldn't get around him. on Wolf. That's who they finally assess the personal to. Eddie Pinkney splits the track. He comes Whoa. back down inside, missing the shot. Well, that was close to a goal ten by Dave Popson. Pinkney again inside. That was quite a sequence for Villanova because although they did not play well, they came up with the two points and now they're within three. It looked like they're gaining some confidence. so far by the Wildcats and it has pulled them to within one point. The Southeast regional title on the line. And a trip to Lexington. The winner here would meet Memphis State next Saturday afternoon. Steal by Presley. Villanova moves ahead 27-26 at the 16-31 minute mark of the second half. Very much a repeat of the Maryland situation, Brent. Now that these seniors are having some positive things happen to them, it looks like they're starting to catch on fire. Manzino is short. Loose. Presley, and they'll be tied up, and the possession stays down there with Carolina. My question to you, Billy, now is Ranzino Smith taking too many shots for the Tar Heels? Well, isn't it amazing? Here's a fellow who had not scored a field goal in a month coming in and being one of the few people that are positively looking for their shot. Now, he's going to sit down now, and Buzz Peterson comes in. But, hey, you look for somebody to give you a spark off the bench. Warren Martin getting ready to come in also. There's the turnovers, and more importantly, the points off those turnovers. So when you think back, Raleigh Massimino has been to this game, as we pointed out, four times. He's had some great games his team's played. And here he's playing in the game where they probably played as poorly as any of those four, and he has maybe his best chance to win it. Thompson, out of bounds. Carolina's ball. They trail by a point. Very 
very tentative now. Should have been a walk, and Carolina, Dean Smith going to have to get a timeout. His club is very, very tentative. Wants to get Martin into the game. Eddie Pinkney, watch that ball inside. Here's Dwayne McLean to the glass with a strong move to the left side. Got to go timeout here, and Dean Smith is going to call it. I thought that was a wise timeout by Dean Smith. Even though he had a TV timeout coming, you cannot afford to let your team lose its tempo as they are right now. Smith, Peterson, Martin, Doherty, and Wolf on the floor for the Tar Heels. McLean knocks it out of bounds. North Carolina's ball. You can see McLean has had great leadership quality even when he was not a starter. Way back when in that game in 1982. Really starting to lead his club now. to the three trees. Just nothing there. Boy, is already free, and on the turnover, it'll go to Villanova, a team that is playing with a great deal of emotion right now. Players get up off their chairs down there on their bench. The fans are into it in behind Raleigh Massimino on the bench. You can see a pain look on the part of all the North Carolina players right now. Nobody quite sure who's supposed to take that big shot. Zone packed way back inside. And now because there's no movement, it's back. They're in, actually in a man-to-man. -man. It's hard to tell. McLean, and it's a five-point lead. Villanova's on fire here in the second half. They can keep beating a dead horse, but it looks like the Maryland game all over again. With the draft, Doherty. Gamble on defense fails. Doherty with the field goal. Back to a three-point lead. Gary McLean directing traffic. Dwayne McLean missing. Doherty rebounding. Carolina can hold it in one. No place to go. There have been no easy layups for Kenny Smith in this game. That is one thing the Nova defense has done. Wolf sends it back to Doherty. Jump hook. Pulls Carolina to within one. I, I really thought Doherty was going to try to pass that ball inside to Martin. Some release. Lane going baseline. Gets inside. McLean walked on the move. He has a tendency to do that. He goes inside. Doherty is waiting on him. There's the call on the charge. Martin came over, but they call the contact. McLean against Doherty. Three fouls on Dwayne McLean. 13-21 left in the game. Villanova leading North Carolina by a point. And Zeno Smith back in there for Peterson again. Dean Smith wanting somebody to put up a positive shot. having a dual role here, having to not only lead the club ball handling, but doesn't give him a place to go try to score. Knocked away by Pinkney and stolen by Villanova. Presley's got an open man. It's Gary McClain, and Wayne follows up and misses the layout. He may be injured, still down on the floor. He actually can call time now. Tar Heels have possession. Turned it over, throwing it across court. Dwayne McLean still down. Jensen now runs to his aid. Can you imagine North Carolina with a five on four throwing the ball across court away? That's been the story of this game. Right. McLean never should have tried to go ahead and jam that. He was all by himself. See Doherty going up. Now what happened here? Kenny Smith, who'd normally be back, thought he could make a steal. When he went up to draw the charge, it left nobody back. We'll see Presley, I mean McLean coming along. I don't know what happened to him. I don't either. I think he might have been embarrassed. He didn't land hard. It doesn't look like he's limping on his ankle. He just got off balance to try to put it in over his head. 
he's being tended to on the sideline. Now, Raleigh will have to take him out, obviously, since he's hurt, not be charged with the timeout. But North Carolina really missed a big opportunity with a five on four. Looked like he hurt his back, maybe. Holding his back. This game's starting to build up drama despite the fact that it's 31 30. Lansky, the good shooter, in to take his place. Pickney outside. And he's just rebounding. North Carolina trying to push the ball up court. But Jensen slams into Ranzino. Ranzino didn't move very far either. But uh, Jensen is the one fellow that whose attitude I think Raleigh Massimino likes today. He looks like he's playing hard, under control, but with a lot of enthusiasm. Great high school player out of Trumbull, Connecticut. And North Carolina try to get inside. Ranzino. Let Wolf get to the glass, and he couldn't score. He was all alone underneath and couldn't tap the ball back in. When he was in a position to go ahead and just catch that ball, lay it right up on the glass. Both teams giving up easy opportunities. There's North Carolina playing that man-to-man, -man, but packing everything in. Now Kenny Smith trying to trap. Somebody's got to be open. Jensen. He's the man. He's the man that's showing he wants it today. Wayne McLean will return for Massimino. So Wolf wide open. Every pass by North Carolina looks like a, an experience. I mean, not one pass is crisp, but knocked away mark. from Martin again. Just what you were talking yep. about. Tentative on the attack that time. Dean Smith has nowhere to go down on that bench with some experienced hand that he can count on. He's a very, very young team. Villanova defensively has done an excellent job against Kenny Smith here this afternoon. And that's where that loss of Hale really hurts him because Hale could take over some of that ball handling and let Kenny free to be a scorer. Presley. Villanova builds a five-point lead. Smith with just one field goal. And that was in the first half. And he was fouled by Gary McClain as he came around him. And that's something that Kenny Smith could try to do that he hasn't tried all day, and that's to penetrate inside that zone with a dribble. He's been content to go ahead and try to do it with a pass. Wayne McClain returns. And Dean Smith comes in with... Hunter trying to get a little quickness in that lineup. Brad Doherty. And Presley stays right with him, but a foul is called. Presley was right on the play. Good timing on his part. Well, with that typical move. Here's Doherty. Really didn't have anybody to pass it to, so just kept on moving towards the basket. Presley anticipated the shot well, went right up. I thought that was a good block. This is Italian Day on CBS. As Luke Carnesecca and Jim Valvano will be following Raleigh Massimino. Well, Brent Dean Smith has now moved ahead of Adolf Rupp in total wins in NCAA tournament play. Is he Italian too? No, but I'll bet you he has never experienced a game like this in the NCAA tournament. I mean, just everything comes. Going in slow motion. Jensen again. He is indeed the man of the day for Villanova. Let's see if Penny Smith recognizes that he can put the ball on the floor and try to get inside that zone. Hunter gets the Dory and Pinkney fronting him took it right away. I've never seen so many tentative passes. Fellas are telegraphing the ball with the ball above their head. Nobody looking for the shot. Nobody penetrating with the dribble. 
Villanova now starting to gain confidence with every possession down the floor. Villanova, a very good delay team. If it turns out that they have to hang on to the ball some. Clean has all that experience. Dwayne McLean puts up two more. It's an eight-point Villanova lead at the nine-minute mark in this game. Dean Smith will send Buzz Peterson back into the game. Ranzino Smith. Joe Wolf's jump hook. Oh, nice hook. But again, it's almost out of desperation that North Carolina gets a basket. It's not something that's clean and concise. Sent it back, and the defense had cut it off. Good. Jensen Blast. saves it, gets the Presley. Harold Jensen contributing another assist. And it's a 10-point lead with timeout. And Nova on a run. Carolina has turned it over 17 times. And more importantly, look at the points off turnovers, Billy. Well, it's been amazing, and that goes back to the tentative play of North Carolina. And, and Brent, I want to go back to the play that ended the first half with roughly 10 seconds ago, Kenny Smith has the ball in his possession and instead of North Carolina having a chance to build their lead, Kenny Smith walked, Villanova got the three-point play and they've come out much more positive since that play. Villanova shot 23% in the first half and 72% so far here in the second half. A complete turnaround. Again, the pass from behind Peterson. Nobody really looking to put up a shot. Every catch is almost an accidental catch. This is a ball club that uh, most people felt would not be one of Dean Smith's strongest teams, but he brought them along very well. The loss, of course, of Michael Jordan. They have never played this tentatively. Oh, Kenny Smith can't get into it. Against Doherty, who had just checked in for the Tar Heels. That's his third personal foul. And Smith has to be concerned. 7.34 to go and trailing by 10 points. You know, Brent, back in 1982 when North Carolina knocked off Villanova, that day the Big East started on the possibility of having three teams in the Final Four. If Villanova keeps going right here, the Big East is in a pretty good position with two teams and one yet to play. And don't count out Jim Balvano and the Wolfpack with North Carolina State. They're going to give St. John's all they can handle this afternoon out in Denver. Now Raleigh Massimino starting to say we're going to run some time off this clock. Ten-point lead. Good ball handler in McLean. Very good move. Dean Smith just voted for the shot clock. Smith is the kind of guy I don't think is his vote is as important as to what he does with the rules that they put in. Good. As he moves it to Jensen, who again brings it back outside because the running time off that clock. Jensen has been by far the best player on this floor today. And even on that last play, it was the smart move not to go ahead and try to take the shot. You've got a 10-point lead, no pressure on the ball. Use that clock. As a freshman, it was tough for him at Villanova last year. And, of course, with these seniors graduating, he'll become one of the main men for Coach Massimino next year. And Raleigh has to be so pleased to see him perform this way in a regional championship game for him. He's a good ball handler. And wide open. That was a little high, so Dwayne McLean brings it out. And the clock gets down inside of six minutes. I said McLean on that dunk that he had over the back of his head that did not go in. I said that maybe his injury was he was a little embarrassed. I notice he's out there now and he seems to be uh, playing pretty well. So sometimes that happens to a player. That's three fouls against Kenny Smith. 
Carolina. North Carolina. Rebounding was even at the first half. Of course, the field goal shooting for Villanova at halftime was 23%. You sure don't win many games that way. If you're going to tell Raleigh yet before this game, he's going to shoot 23% in the first half and in the second half of a 10-point lead. You said you're crazy. North Carolina starting to chase wildly. When you're playing against seniors and you chase wildly, somebody's going to get a layup. Don't be surprised to see Eddie Pinkney dunk one here shortly. Gary McLean came in and turned it over. He traveled. That caught the double team. Probably Massimino and Gary probably wondering why would he try to penetrate inside to the double team. Kenny Smith is one of four from the field. It's an end to Doherty. And the foul is against Villanova. It's going to be against Eddie Pinkney. That's his third, isn't it? but not in much trouble. He's been able to protect himself very well back in the zone. Smith getting that ball lobbed into Doherty. You see, getting help from the weak side. Presley comes over. Pinckney doesn't get there quite in time. But for North Carolina, they need three-point plays at this time. He's almost in the circle. Pass back to Lanzino Smith. Curtis Hunter. One down by Jensen. And he is fouled. A shot by Hunter was just going up there so hard and no arc on it at all. Cliff Morris, number 20, a senior guard out of Durham, North Carolina, with his first appearance. Well, Morris, one of those fellows that hustles hard in practice, but look at this lineup that Dean Smith has out there now. He took Doherty out. This is the chasing team. Dean wanted over and back on Presley. Realizing Raleigh Massimino is going to go to a complete stall here unless he gets a layup. Dean Smith went with a very small team. Only Warren Martin out there with any size. Smith told the Tar Heels to go for the ball. So he has not ordered them to put Villanova on the foul line yet. Villanova's wisely going to keeping his ball out here instead of getting that penetration as happened to McLean the last time. Jensen again doing the job. Now they're going to a real four corners with a man in the middle. Ball is stolen. Hunter takes it away and comes in. Driving slam for Carolina. Positive defensive move. That's the ball, is where the ball uh, needs to be for Raleigh Massimino when McLean's in. A lot of trapping now. Easy layup for Presley. Good job by Eddie Pinkney. Warren Martin just not getting back in time. Carolina had gone four minutes and 49 seconds without a field goal. Gets away and great hustle by Jensen. Jensen and this Villanova team three minutes and 20 seconds away from taking Raleigh Massimino to his first Final Four, but the school has been there before. Back in 1971 Howard Porter took them all the way to the finals before they lost to UCLA. That was the last Bruin team, of course, the next year to repeat as champions. John Thompson and Georgetown going after that. Curtis Hunter has hit the field goal, and the timeout is called by Dean Smith. 
Three minutes and seven seconds. There are a number of occasions in the NCAA record books where teams and players that got there just don't show up. The shaving scandals had to do with some, and of course that situation with Porter. Five seconds. Jensen oh. called a timeout, Billy, before the five-second count. He alertly saw that they were about uh -oh. to reach five, and Dean Smith Did you see not the pleased <laughs> with the performance of the officials in Birmingham. His throat didn't hurt. Jensen lobbing the ball, and it's out of bounds. It'll go to Carolina. It's hard to believe that Villanova, with all their experience, would be having this type of problem getting the ball in bounds. Eddie Pinkney wanted to step out of bounds and go ahead and get it in easily. North Carolina making a little run here, but they've got a long way to go. Villanova has that out of bounds play. Scout it beautiful. Dorney hits. No time to sure again. Now there's a case where the ball got knocked out of bounds, so it did stop the clock for him. And Morris was able to check into the lineup, giving him a little more quickness. Telling the players to leave the ball alone. North Carolina smacking it out of the way. Was able to stop the clock with it. That's what they wanted to do last time. But he quickly stepping out of bounds. Good catch by McLean. And McLean will come up to the free throw line at the two minute and 51 second mark. Now they still have that foul to give. That is their last one. So he will not come to the line. Now they're at the limit. And the next foul will send Villanova to the line. Well, enable Dean Smith to get in his team. Change that lineup a little bit. McLean almost going out of bounds. Gary McLean will come up and shoot the free throws. Gary McLean, 81% free throw shooter, and he likes to be the line in a big situation. Doing a wise thing here. He's staying away from the line. Doesn't want to get up there and have to stand around and wait. When the official gets the ball in his hands, he's going to go up and take his position on the line. Smart move. The winner of this game next Saturday afternoon draws Dana Kirk and Memphis State. Georgetown awaiting the winner of the St. John's North Carolina State game later today. McLean backs off that line. He talks to himself in the lobby. I saw him today and I, I drew a charge on him. He was talking to himself. He was spaced out completely to the point that he was concentrating so much in the game. I was able to go up and jump in front of him. He didn't even realize it. Two forty-four. Villanova with a nine-point lead. again. Villanova's defense, which has triggered the second half performance. Green McLean a little tentative on getting rid of the ball. Finally gets it over to Gary. Gary McLean could have gone down to Presley and back to Pinckney for the stuff, but he wisely realized the clock is the opponent right here. They'll put Dwayne McLean on the line. Now he's been to the line 335 times this year. Only a 57% free throw shooter. It's amazing, you know, you could imagine what kind of stats he could have if he was a good free throw shooter. In the best of times, Massimino is one of the most active coaches in the game. You imagine now what's going through his mind. He's never been to the Final Four. He leads North Carolina by nine points. This team came into the Southeast region seeded number eight. They've had to do this the hard way. They beat Dayton in Dayton. Then they drew Michigan, the top-seeded team, and they upset them last Sunday. Then they came down here and played Maryland, which was seeded higher. Now they've got the second seed in the Southeast. It's been a long, tough road for Massimino and Villanova. Well, they always say there's a Cinderella. I want to apologize to McLean. I had him down there with his field goal shooting percentage instead of his free throw, shooting at 75% and drilled up. for a berth in that final four. Smith comes through, Pinkney blocks, but Gordy is there. And there was what I was talking about, Brent. Smith all day long didn't ever try to penetrate with the dribble through that zone. It's the first time today. And North Carolina has to foul now. 
And it'll be Gary McLean coming back to the free throw line. way of going a place you dreamed about all your life. Yeah, I hate to always see anybody lose, especially a program that's as classy as North Carolina and Dean Smith through the years, but I, I really do feel for the seniors on Raleigh Massimino's team. They have they have been so close before and never had the joy of going to a final four. And here they are 152 away. It's a rebuilding time for Villanova certainly next year. Dean Smith this is a young Tar Heel team. He has a lot of talent coming up to join him. They lost all those great players this year. They got close. They're still not out of this. They're still firing away. The time is starting to run down on them now. There again, McLean just realizing he didn't have to take that ball. There was an opportunity for him to take it the, the distance. And he wants to win. Forget about the score. They have to put somebody on the line quickly because they let Presley through for the slam. At 120 coming up now. 55-42, Smith goes all the way, misses, yanked down by Pinckney. It's been that kind of an afternoon for North Carolina. You think Dean Smith will burn the film of this game? Huh? If you're Raleigh Massimino, you put it in the Hall of Fame. If you're Dean Smith, you can't believe it. I want to see the celebration around Massimino when this one ends. Hey, you better watch Raleigh. He, later, he's hugging Look at his him. assistants. Here it goes. He knows. Break out the Italian food. He's a great guy, and you couldn't be happier. And at the same time, your heart goes out for these folks. They played as hard as they did this year. Well, in the case and of, got so close. In the case of most of them, of course, they'll be back. And that man right there, Steve Hale. When you consider this team lost, Perkins to graduation, Michael George to the pros, and Steve Hale to injury, as we pointed out at the top of the show, probably accomplished an awful lot just getting here. White Wilbur didn't even get in the second half. And his replacement, Jensen, is really the story of the game. So the main line's going to Kentucky. Big news up in Kentucky, of course. Joe Hall announcing his resignation. And I'm going to say that Gene Cady's going to get that job at Kentucky. Smith coming through. That certainly is the name that has popped to the forefront here lately. The Purdue head coach, Gene Cady, now being rumored to be in line to succeed Joe Hall in Kentucky. It'll be a fine choice if it comes up that way. Look at that yeah, Villanova Jetson, bench. Jetson's wanting to celebrate. This game is over, and Dean Smith says, no sense falling. Let the clock run down. It serves no purpose. Great to see that bench in behind him, yep. isn't it? It's worth seeing Raleigh Massimino just go these last 20 seconds. Oh, yeah. What a moment for this school and this team and this coach. One of the class teams in all year. They've been playing number one and number two, it seems like. Georgetown, St. John's, Michigan. They've got, you know, five of their losses against those two clubs. And now the dream is theirs. Raleigh Massimino is going to the Final Four.